Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last few classes, uh, we had looked at uh, non-dimensional thrust and ISP for cases wherein the efficiencies were all unity. Right? Uh, let us now look at the case where efficiencies are not equal to unity and let us see how the equations change there. Now, if you look at the TS diagram for a turbojet with efficiencies, what you will let us consider only the simple cycle, no afterburner. This is a cycle with uh, 100 percent efficiency. Now, if you have non unity efficiencies, Now, if you have non unity efficiencies, you will get a cycle like this. The dashed ones are for non-unity uh, efficiencies. Now, uh, when we did the analysis for a ramjet, we saw that we were able to handle efficiencies of the non-moving parts namely intake then uh, burner, then nozzle right. Here in addition to these we have the compressor and the turbine ok. So, in addition we have Good thing about this is we will we are going to look at it in uh, two different ways. We are going to handle uh, efficiencies with relate related with the non moving parts in the same way as we did in the ramjet analysis. That is we are going to look at intake, burner and nozzle the same way as in ramjet. Here we are going to look at it a little differently ok. 
just to refresh your memory uh, the intake efficiencies can be varying from 0.6 to 0.9 and is a strong function of the Mach number. Then we have compressor efficiency which can be of the order of 0.8 to 0.87 then the burner is 0.93 to 0.95 then turbine efficiencies and finally nozzle efficiencies of the order of 0.5 okay <clears throat> notice one thing that both these two are lower than these two right there is a difference between the two of them that is both these have an adverse pressure gradient to cope with which is why they will have a typically diffusers and compressors will have a lower efficiency compared to uh, turbines and nozzles. Okay. Now let us uh, do our cycle analysis, cycle analysis the expression for uh, thrust per unit mass flow rate right or non dimensional thrust what is this expression now this is the same as earlier that is T7 minus by T0 into right this is for optimally expanded flow in the nozzle okay so therefore uh, p7 is equal to p0 so that term vanishes out the pressure thrust term vanishes out we have to find expressions for these two ratios okay uh, to find expression for t7 by t0 uh, before we go there let us first look at what is different from the all unity cycle. Now if you remember in the previous case uh, when we analyze ramjet uh, efficiencies we dealt with slightly differently we said for the non moving parts if you look at intake burner and nozzle we included the efficiency terms in the pressure cascading the reason for that being that if you assume that it goes to the same same stagnation temperature let us say we are looking at intake on a TS diagram if you are looking at only an intake process this is for uh, uh, 100 percent efficient cycle. Now the assumption that we made was a non isentropic process would go something like this to do dash wherein the temperatures are the same the stagnation temperatures of 2 and 2 dash are the same only that the 
these pressures are different, right. These are constant pressure lines, these are different and therefore, we looked at uh, handling this terms with only efficiencies coming up in the pressure terms, fine. Hmm. The flow is uh, uh, at most stagnation, it is not stagnation. Uh, no, it's not when? At the end of uh, diffuser intake, two, uh -huh. two point, uh -huh. two. Uh -huh. So, two we are assuming that it is a stagnation uh, temperature, uh -huh. okay. but uh, we know H T naught is the content of energy in the flow. Yes. Okay. If some losses are there, so energy should not be equal to uh, the ideal energy like H T naught of the ideal idle is not equal to H T naught dash. True. So, uh, how can we uh, say in real systems what we uh, look at is when we are looking at an intake, okay. if, if the process were isentropic you would have a certain pressure recovery okay, at the end of the uh, isentropic compression you would have a certain pressure recovery. If the process is real what is the pressure recovery or what is the pressure at the end of such a process is what you are looking at. So, from that perspective if you look at this here you are trying to capture what is the pressure recovery okay. This efficiency would then indicate whether it is 100 percent efficient, 90 percent, 60 percent efficient. The pressure terms contain the efficiency part right and here if you look at uh, this case we have only turbine and compressor to take care of fine. Now, in the turbine and compressor what we do is we know that uh, the power of the turbine uh, the work or the power produced by the turbine must be equal to the power consumed by the compressor right because of the balance between the two. So, if you remember we did not say tau c and tau t are two different things, we try to combine them through one equation. So, if we take efficiencies of turbine and compressor there, we are going to complete the cycle. So, even in this analysis we will carry out uh, cascading wherein we will deal with efficiencies in terms of pressure for the non moving parts and when we come to the compressor and turbine we look at uh, what happens between the power of the compressor and the turbine with efficiencies. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, compressor turbine power balance or before we go there how are efficiencies defined for the compressor and turbine. Eta C is defined as T T three minus T T two T T three dash minus T T two. Okay, and similarly, the turbine efficiency is defined as. T T 4 minus T T 5 divided by T T 4 minus T T 5 dash ok. This is obvious from this figure where this is T T 5 dash, this is T T 3 dash ok. So, let us now try and do the cycle analysis and try to get these two ratios. So, from here if we are going to do a similar analysis to what we did in ramjet okay, would uh, whatever we had derived in the previous classes for T 7 by T naught be any different. See compressor turbine power balance will consider efficiencies there, but otherwise in the temperatures while cascading we do not look at efficiency. True, but uh, they they appear as tau c and tau t, right? If you look at the expression, they like appear as tau c and tau t. When you include that power balance, 
tau c and tau c t cannot be independent terms. So, when you include them in the power balance that is when you get the real expression for both of connecting both of them ok. So, let us do the cascading. So, firstly cascading temperatures ok, we want an expression for T 7 by T naught similar to the previous cases T 7 by T T 7 into T T 7 by T T 6, T T 6 by T T 5, T T 5 by T T 4, T T 4 by T T 3. T naught ok. Now, as in the previous case what is this? This is a ratio of stagnation to static. So, I can express it in terms of Mach number this is flow through jet pipe this is 1. Uh, now, this is flow through nozzle 1, this is flow through jet pipe again 1, this is pi t sorry tau t and uh, this is flow through the main combustor 1 and this is tau c, this is 1 flow through intake and this is theta naught right. So, it is similar to what we had earlier derived that is sorry this has to be T T 4 by tau b and then if we put it in terms of theta b the expression that we get is we know that tau b and theta b are related that is so from here I get tau b would be equal to theta b by tau c theta naught and if I substitute it finally, I will get T 7 by T naught is equal to tau t tau c this and this cancels out I get ok. 
now I need an expression for Mach number ratio which I will get by cascading pressures. So we know that P7 by P0 is equal to 1 is equal to P7 by Pt7, Pt7 by Pt6 into Pt6 by Pt5, so Pt5 by Pt4. Now when we cascade pressures, uh, if you remember what we did with ramjet, we will get efficiencies here. So this is 1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m7 square into Pt7 by Pt6 this is flow through nozzle, so this has an efficiency that is the nozzle efficiency okay. Now uh, flow through the jet pipe also has an efficiency let me call it eta jp if it is on it will be different value if it is off it will be a slightly different value. Then what is this Pt5 by Pt4? This is pi t into eta burner. This is through the combustor. Then this is through the compressor. So this is pi c. This is intake into theta naught to the power of right. Now <coughs> just like when we did ramjet analysis we will club all these efficiencies into one and we will define theta eta as <coughs> if I define it this way I can express all the terms here as a power of gamma by gamma minus 1 okay this is just the intelligent way of putting it here so that we will get the same powers so pi t I know is nothing but tau t to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1 I will put all of them so I will get 1 plus m7 eta tau c theta naught okay. <coughs> if you look at this expression we wanted in the denominator that value. So, we have got this, so now I can write T7 by T0 as equal to okay, which I can cancel the tau t terms write it as theta naught. Now 
we are interested in Mach number ratios and the other thing that I know about is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square is equal to theta naught. So, using these two expressions I get the Mach number ratio as m 7 by m naught is equal to theta tau t tau c theta naught minus 1 ok. Now, we know both the ratios temperature as well as Mach number. So, we substitute them in the equation and find out how it looks like. So, when we put them in this non dimensional thrust equation m dot a a naught we get m naught theta b by theta If we put efficiencies is equal to 1 here, we recover back the turbojet equation, right. So, we have put this as equal to 1, which is what is the turbojet equation, right. Now, we need to find an expression connecting tau c and tau t, right. So, this comes from, <coughs> from compressor turbine power balance we get m dot a c p t t 3 dash minus t t 2 this is the actual power consumed by the compressor this must be equal to m dot a c p t t 4 minus t t 5 dash. This is the actual power delivered by the turbine. Okay. So, here we have assumed c p to be constant. Yes, you can take a mechanical efficiency which will uh, uh, turn out to be that you will have to take 1 by mechanical efficiency here. You can include that, you can assume it to be 1. If you want to include it, you can put it here, ok. So, C p is equal to constant and the other assumption is that, I am sorry, to write here 1 plus f because there is a larger mass flow rate and the other assumption that we will make is f is very much less than 1 ok. Now, using this we will get we also know how to connect efficiency of the compressor to this right. If you remember uh, what was the efficiency T T 3 by minus T T 2 divided by ok. So, I get I want this term I want this term sorry. So, I will get it as 
T T 3 minus T T 2 divided by eta C. And similarly, turbine efficiency was T T 4 minus T T 5 dash divided by So, if I take these efficiency terms into account, uh, these equations will we will be able to rewrite as follows. This mechanical efficiency needs to be included here and not here because if mechanical efficiencies are non unity which is less than 1 then the compressor requires more than what the turbine can give. So, you have to include it here ok. So, it will be if you cross multiply it will be a a fraction compressor will only get a fraction of what the turbine develops ok fine. So, where does mechanical efficiency come in here in this equation right fine. So, we are interested in tau c and tau t. So, to get that We divide both sides by T naught T T four by T naught minus T T five by T naught. What is T T three by T naught? T T 3 by T T 2 into T T 2 by T naught right. What is this T T 2 this is 1 for flow through diffuser or intake this is what is this now C and this is theta naught. So, this term becomes theta naught and similarly on this side what is T T 4 by T naught this is theta b and this term would be T T 5 by T T 4 into T T 4 by T naught ok. So, T T 4 by T naught is theta b this is so tau t into theta b. So, we get T 
theta naught by theta b into eta c eta t theta mechanical right or tau t is equal to one minus theta naught by theta b okay now if you look at this expression what happens if efficiencies are not equal to 1 then this term increases right and you will get a lesser tau t fine that means that you will have lower and lower pressure at the end of the turbine fine is that correct sorry if you have unity you will have theta naught by theta b into tau c uh, minus 1 but if you have non unity then what happens this term is large and therefore 1 minus this will be small which is again what I said earlier that is correct. So you will get tau t to be small fine and when tau t is small the pressure ratio the pressure at the end of turbine is low and sometimes if the efficiencies are very poor one might actually end up having a turbine at the end of which there is no power left for uh, there is nothing left for expansion through the nozzle which means there will be no thrust that is produced. So one needs to be careful about efficiencies here so that we do not end up in such a situation. Now we have been able to uh, derive expressions for non dimensional thrust for all situations that is efficiency is not equal to 1, efficiency is equal to 1 and optimally expanded flow uh, as well as uh, nozzle being choked and we have also looked at after burner without after burner and uh, what is the other mode of uh, water methanol injection also we have looked at right. Now here in this case ISP by A0 uh, that does not change the expression does not change but F by M dot A A0 will be different because you now have efficiency terms coming in okay. The expression for ISP by A0 would be Now I sorry I think we need to derive this see there is efficiency term involved and uh, therefore the TT4 by uh, because of which we need to re look at what is the ISP expression. So if we look at ISP by A0 we had in the previous classes looked at this expression this is 1 by f into f by m dot a a naught okay. Now how do we get 1 by f we get 1 by f by looking at the 
energy balance across the burner. So, from across the burner, I get m dot f into q is equal to m dot e into 1 plus f remember in the earlier expression that we wrote when the efficiencies were 1 we were looking at t t 3 only right because if you look at uh, what happens due to non isentropic process this temperature would be higher than or different than the earlier temperature. So, you have a situation wherein this is different. So, therefore, that will come here right. So, we make the assumption that we had done earlier that is f is very much less than 1. So, I can take out this quantity and I get my expression for 1 by f is equal to t t 4 by t naught. Now, we know that compressor efficiency is eta c is equal to T T 3 minus T T 2 ok. So, using this Oh, sorry, thank you. This goes to the denominator, so it will be thank you. Okay. We know efficiency is denoted in this fashion, so I can connect from T T 3 dash to T T 3 here. So, 1 by f is equal to q by c p t naught before I do that I will just do a small manipulation with this expression t t 3 by t t 2 minus 1 into t t 2 I can write this expression rewrite this as this and T T 3 dash by T T 2 minus 1 this and this cancels out. I am interested in this expression. So, I will get T T 3 dash by T T 2 
as equal to So, T T three by T T T T three dash by T T two would be one minus. What is this T T three by T T two? This is tau C. Okay. So, sorry, one plus. This goes here, you get this. Now we have been able to get the expression for T T three dash by T T two. We can use it here and uh, we can write T T three dash by T naught as equal to This expression is what we have derived just now. What is this? This is nothing but theta naught. So I get T T three by T naught is equal to tau c minus one divided by eta c. Into theta naught. So finally, my one by f term comes out to be Theta b minus theta naught to one plus tau c minus one okay this is the expression that we get so what happens to if you plug this in in the ISP by A naught expression, you get ISP by A naught is equal to Q by C P T naught This is the expression that we get for ISP by A naught. Now, if you see in this expression, what happens if eta c is not equal to one? This part reduce increases, and therefore theta b minus this would be small, right? So, can I now say it is advantageous? to have a non efficient compression process if you look at this expression it's a it's in a sense it disguises some things we have not written the full expression for f by m dot a a naught wherein efficiency terms are also there right 
if you look at this it appears as if this part will be reduced uh, will be increased and therefore the entire term will be smaller and as a consequence ISP will be higher. But if eta c becomes large I uh, means is uh, is a low value not large it is a low value then what happens is the pressure ratio across the compressor or the pressure at the end of the uh, turbine becomes smaller and smaller they will you, you, they will, you will not have any power left for expansion through the nozzle right. So, uh, although it looks very deceiving here it is not the actual case you need to plug in the values for eta c and other things uh, into this expression and then see how it looks like. We will look at it in the next class, thank you.